After two seasons of scraping to win the Minnow event, the Brage Cup, La Rue Course, the Open Tour, we are now finally, after finishing 18th in the Pro Cycling Rankings last year, given a chance to do a full tour of the Cycling Championship. Here we are then, folks, for the start of Season 3 of the TIJ Racing Team Adventure. It is time for Episode 1 of Pro Team Tour de France 2020. Hello there, folks, and welcome back to... The Pro Team Career Mode on Tour de France 2020. It's episode one of the new season. And this is going to be the best season yet. We have got an expanded calendar this year. We are competing in every single event, including the big one of the year, the full Tour de France. And with that, we have assembled a new team of riders, a stronger team of riders, most certainly. We're given about £350,000 to play with at the end of the season. Um, and I think we've made some really strong signings. Now, you'll notice three men have left. The teams Williams has gone. Um, John Dibbon has gone, and who's the other one? I'm just trying to think. Somebody else has left, and it's escaped me who it is. Dibbon, Williams, and I can't think who else it is. But it'll come to me in a second. But we have retained six of our riders. We have retained McClay. We have re retained Ben Swift. We have retained Dafini. We have retained Mikel Bierge, Valentin Maduas, and Dea Quintana. Adding to that list, though, are some of the best riders on the tour. We have signed Teo Gagenhart, who performed brilliantly for us, albeit only in the first few stages of the Team Ineos career mode. He's now our strongest mountain rider. Um, that's going to be very solid, particularly when we come up to some of the bigger events. We've also signed Van Baal, um, who's pretty much versatile and uh, is actually a very good cobblestone rider. That's what we're looking for uh, because we got caught out there last year. And as you can see, apart from sprints, which is just below 70, all of his stats are above the 70 mark. We've also signed, I think that's Chris Lawless, if I'm right in saying. Um, he's a solid rider, and he's a bit of a younger rider at the age of 25, and uh, just a bit of a backup rider. And then at the bottom here, we have signed three very young riders, uh, 24, 23, and 23 once again. Bjerge is now, well, only 22, actually, Bjerge is. I feel like that's probably in real life, isn't it? I don't think the guy's aging game, I don't think that happens. But uh, Bjerge is 22, still the... Um, Youngest on the team, but we've got a good cobblestone rider in Jacobs again, much like uh, Van Baal, a rider who's quite versatile, and then Major as well, the Swiss rider. So I think we've got a good team, a, a 12 strong team this year, and let's get into it for the start of this year's La Route course. So as you can see, we have the full complement of tournaments. We've got La Route course, then we go to Paris Nice. How many stages have we got there? There's eight stages. Then we've got two classics. We've got the Vlaanderen Classic and the Paris Roubaix race, all singular stages. The same as Liège, Baston Liège. Then we've got the Brage Cup, the Criterium de Dauphine, and then the big one, the Tour de France. Oh, then the Open Tour and uh, the Euro Tour, both of which we competed in last year. Um, those two are both cobblestone, as well as one of the stages in the Euro Tour. So I'm glad we've got a cobblestone rider. Um, but in La Route Course, we're going to do two of the stages today. You can see it's a hilly stage, a fairly flat stage, and then uh, a mountain stage. So we're going to pick our six riders. Um... I'm going to have a look at our riders that we're going to pick now. Um, play. Yes, we'll alter our team for the start of the race. Um, and then, yeah, I will see you guys when we get to the first stage and explain why we have picked who we have picked. Hi, guys. Welcome to the briefing for this first stage. Today is a tiring route where the closing kilometres should suit the punches. Even if the stage isn't really within our scope, you've got to stay vigilant for the general classification. Good race to you all. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Many riders should have ambitions of victory today. The route is conducive to breakaways, but the punches will no doubt want to land a killer blow on the final climb. Let's not forget the speed merchants who might be able to hang on in the last climb to settle for a sprint victory. Here we are then, the start of the new season, as you can see. It is a fairly flat stage today. A few climbs, uh, four climbs actually, a few more than maybe I expected there to be on a flat stage as such. And we've picked our six riders. Um, we've got the four usual ones, really. We've got uh, Athene, Medus, Quintana, and, yeah, uh, Swift, of course. Who could forget Swifty? And then we've got this man, Van Baal, who's uh, one of our new riders. One of the versatile riders, but pretty decent in the mountains. Again, being a versatile rider usually means you're pretty good everywhere. And we've also picked... Um, we've also picked... Is it... Oh, we picked Gagenhart. Of course, we've picked Teo Gagenhart. Um, as our other rider. Really just gone for our strongest lineup for this first, first event of the season. Just to gauge um, how good these two new riders are. It is going to be tricky now, I think, now that we've got uh, a good problem to have, certainly. 
in having a lot of good riders at the team, not just a few decent riders, uh, you know, last year. And by the way, it's Holmes that we got rid of as well. His name escaped me for a little while there, but it is indeed uh, Marcus Holmes that we got rid of. So, you know, that Deadwood, we didn't really focus on them too much, but all of our riders, I mean, not all of them, not everyone, because the youngsters... Um, aren't maybe going to get as much attention from us as certainly being individuals who will get for individual accolades. Uh, but, you know, we've got Van Barlow, I think, got very good potential given his raids to be a solid rider for us. We've got Quintana, of course, Meduas, Ben Swift. I mean, Meduas and Swift were our two big boys last year, most definitely. And then, of course, we've got the likes of Lawless and uh, our other new riders as well. So, going to be interesting to see how we do this year, but it's a very long season given that we've got the full roster of events this year as you can see we have entered the breakaway van ball there are a few objectives today uh, the first one to do exactly what we're doing now being a part of today's breakaway with van ball and also to finish in the top 20 of the stage with uh, valentin meduas and Te teo gagenhaar but really what we'll be focusing on um, i think it probably will be a bunched finish so a try just trying to get some early points with van ball stop anyone else taking uh, any mounting points and also potentially um taking that last sprint with ben swift but it's gonna be a fairly uh What's the word? Huh. A stage with no action. A fairly boring stage, I would say. I wouldn't say boring. But what's a what's a what's a nice word to describe boring? I'm trying to think now. What's a word that doesn't mean boring? Uneventful. Yeah, that'll do. Uneventful stage. I think that's probably more polite. But yeah, I think this will be an uneventful stage. Um, might as well stay with you guys up this climb. Shall we look? We get our feed after that first sprint. So good to know. Anacona is the guy in front. Uh, we've got Nakane behind. And then as you can see, there is the Peloton. So we're about nine seconds behind uh, Anacona. Apparently he's a good climber, which is a little bit worrying. But we'll see what Van Baal's made of here. We've actually got a little bit further to go in the climb than I thought. So um, I'll see you guys a little bit close to the top. Fairly confident we can do something here. But uh, this will be a good indication of what Van Baal's like in the mountains. The gap is decreasing. Well, these two are working very hard here. We are losing energy a little bit. I'm not going to put too much into this climb, just in case we jeopardise Van Baal's later race. End of the day, there's only one point available here. We will go for it, of course, if we've got a chance. We probably can afford to use a little bit of our feed here. Given that we've just got the sprint to go after this. I think we're probably a little bit too far away, to be honest, now. Let's give it a go. 1.3 k's to go. I think Anacona's going to do this. I mean, 12 seconds is the gap now. But that's coming down. You never know. He might blow up before the top. Good climber, though, apparently. So I would, I would doubt it. Let's try and get the jump on him here, as you can see. We're uh, going to run out of energy fairly quickly on here. Might as well use all of our gel. Anacona's caught napping, though, there. But I think uh, he's going to attack. Well, he's not that good a climber, is he? Quish really struggled there, but still got on top ahead of him. Uh, can't argue with that one. That was pretty good from Van Baal, taking the first mountain point of the season. Nearly crashed into the grass there. Quite be quite funny if you could actually go onto the grass, wouldn't it? The game just stops you. But again, we can gain a lot of energy back now. Um, as you can see, the three guys still in this breakaway looking nice. We've got the first sprint. And then I'd probably say that the Peloton will probably catch us up, I would guess. Well, there's now four of us in this breakaway. Terame has now joined us. The Peloton's just behind. Uh, apparently we're the best sprints in the breakaway. Just looking at Ben Swift. Is there any, any option to get into position now? We'll just set a high tempo, though. Get Swifty to put a good uh, tempo in on the relay. We haven't got McClay in this event, unfortunately, to go for it in the sprints. But, unfortunately, you only get six bases. Can't do too much about that. I think we'll be safe from the Peloton here. We've got plenty of energy. We've got a feed coming up straight after this. So, we'll actually might as well use uh, our feed. If anybody who's struggling, I don't really think they are. We might as well use our blue gel with Ben Swift, though. It's not going to hurt. So, three kilometres to go. First sprint of the season. be nice to win that as well. I don't think any of our opponents are brilliant sprinters. This is the nice thing with having a versatile rider. With Bierge being the man in the breakaways last year, it was a bit of a pain because he'd be all right up the mountains, then he'd be shattered by the time he comes to the bottom. He just wasn't versatile enough, hadn't got the stamina. Um, and I think we'll see what Van Baal's long game is like today. 
So Clomish half to go. We'll get Ben Swift to attack now, just so it's uh, nice and early on here. I suppose we can get Athene to do the same. Okay, I'll put Obviously more points the available here, so seems sensible to go for it. Let's see uh, what he's like then. This looks pretty good from Van Baal. Goodness me, it does. He's not a bad sprinter. Good lad. Athene looking good though. Athene's going to get some points here. Hmm, Sif Swifty might struggle from there. Very much focus on uh, Athene here. Come on, son. Ah, it's not quite happened for him, is it there? Ah, well. Doesn't matter. Still got how many points? Six. I'll take that. Bit of a shock that Ben Swift only got, uh, well, got nowhere, to be honest, in the end. But good stuff to see. A decent first sprint. And, of course, we win it with Van Baal. Very happy with that. And uh, I'll probably see you guys we get yeah, to the next climb. Well, we've done really well here, I have to say, because we were actually in the peloton just now. But uh, I noticed the two guys were really starting to struggle behind. So I thought, well, let's put an attack in. Let's try and get uh, a bit of a jump. And it seems to have worked, actually. Peloton probably going to catch us up, mind you. But, again, it was a decent opportunity. A few guys being gapped already. Good to see none of ours are being gapped. That happened all too often last year. It didn't help us in the team classification at all. Not that I don't think you get any points for that classification, but still, it's good for pride. And, and just highlights that really you need a good team in this uh, to do well. As you can see, there's an attack being made here. Again, not too bothered about this, really. Two points to play for on this climb, and it's not the be-all and end-all. Just seeing what Van Baal's made of today, and then we'll focus on Ben Swift for the sprint later on. But uh, again, I'll see you guys at the top of the uh, top of the hill. Top of the climb, top of the mountain. I don't know what it is. Is it a mountain? Col de San Martino. Hmm. I don't know if it's a mountain or a big hill. Make that up yourself. Well, I'm going to try something here. Not with Van Baal, because he's been uh, knackered already, but uh, with Valentin Maduas. Try and get a good gap to the peloton. And that seems to have worked. Nobody's gone for it. We've told Van Baal to protect uh, Maduas, but we might tap that off now, because I don't want him to uh, use up too much of energy. As you can see, Athene's starting to struggle up here. Another rider is a bit strange, really. His stats look good, but he never really seems to perform on the day. So he might be one later in the season that we might not be able to rely on in some of the big events. This is good stuff from Maduas. We knew we were going to go for the polka dot jersey with Maduas anyway. So I thought, well, we might as well go for the two points with him here. And uh, we'll attack with Quintana, I think. Try and get another singular point with him. I don't think Maduas can be caught really now. He's not ideally placed, is he really, Quintana? Try and get the rest out of the way. Maduas is going to be absolutely fine, I would have thought. Well, that's not ideal for uh, Dea Quintana. But hopefully he should be alright here. And he does. He gets the last point. That's good to see. Tell him to wait for the next group. The others should at least get some sort of reprieve. Uh, coming back down here. But I don't to, I don't know what to make of Maduas, really. I don't know. Do we go for it here? I'm not sure. I don't know if it's worth uh, waiting for the peloton. Or maybe going for this. We'll go for it. We'll see what happens. Because although it's a flat stage, not the flattest stage in the world. So I think a, a breakaway could do something here. And as you can see, only 65 in the peloton. So uh, it might be a flat stage... By nature, but as you can see, flat stages tend to be a bunched finish. So we'll see how it goes here. And I think if Maduas can set a high tempo, it might just uh, split the peloton up quite nicely in our favour. Well, I think this stage might be enough for a video as it is. Quite a few climbs today, actually. Maduas is doing a brilliant job out in front here. Just had a word in our ear from the sports director just to make sure we keep well nourished. That British fan's going to be well off the road there. It's a solid gap Maduas has got. Managed to gain pretty much all of our 
energy back coming back down there. And I think we've got another... Yeah, it's not such a start sharp decline, but the rest of the guys looking okay. Athene's dropped off. I'm not too surprised at that, to be quite honest. And uh, he's probably the weakest of the six on this little tour. But I think we should be nicely at the top by ourselves here. And having port four points to start off with, remember we've got that second class climb later on as well. That could be very helpful for us. Although I think the peloton will probably catch up by then. We can't sustain this sort of pace for that long, I wouldn't have thought. But again, half a kilometre before the top. No need to exert ourselves too much. They're not going to gain that much uh, time now. So, worth going for it with uh, Dea Quintana again. Going to be tricky to get through here. We push our way through almost. Would uh, question the game's physics slightly there. Medeus gets uh, the two points. Is it going to be the same lineup as the previous climb? I think it is. Quintana just gets the other points. Very, very solid attempt. Excellent. Just try and regain the energy with Medeus coming down here. And uh, I'll see you guys for the final climb of the day. Well, 20 kilometres of the day left. I'm going to try something here. I want to see... I think I know what he's made of, but I want to see what Teo Gagenhart is made of. It's all downhill till the end. I mean, Nafini wants to play here, I think. Just want to make sure that uh, Swifty's okay, actually. Again, we'd like to get some points uh, in the green jersey classification, but I'm interested in what Gagenhart can offer here. And... Uh, other riders are going too. We know it'll be a good pace set here. We're about to free to go. We just want to strike here. We just want to attack. But I think uh, others have got the same idea. So I think we're gonna we're gonna go here. See if Gagenhart will join us. We'll just get him to attack just to give him a poke. I don't think we need Swift to protect us. That's not the best idea. But let's see what we can do here. If we can get a good gap, then because it's downhill all the way to the end, we should win the stage. But potentially it's not going to be as easy as that. As you can see, we're not gapping them massively behind. Although, I think the general classification is going to be a little bit different to what it usually would be on a flat stage. Just uh, use a little bit of our blue feed. Uh, sorry, red feed. This looks okay to me. Seems Gagenhart didn't want to play. Not too fussed about Athene, to be quite honest. Swifty's struggling, so I'll give him his red gel. The others are all okay, I think, though. Get Van Baal just to persist smoothly. Same as Quintana. Use your blue gel and just follow and don't override for Athene now. Actually, we'll just get them to persist without limit. They should be all right. So where are they? They're just behind. 15 seconds now. And there's the one kilometre line. Would be a brilliant way to start this tour with some points here. And I think we should do. Just looking again. Everyone's still in that peloton group. That's good to see. We'll get both Gagenhart and uh, Quintana to attack here. Let's try and get some points. Obviously, there's some points available. I think all for the top four, isn't there, here? No point pushing too much with Medeus, though. Just want to make sure he gets to the top first. That could be very easy not to. Should be fine now. Ah, they're not very well placed, are they? They're not very well placed, really, where they are. Go for it. Come on, Gagenhart. Push your way through. Go on, son. Lovely. Brilliant. Van Baal. Van Baal ends up second. Well, that was out of nowhere, wasn't it? Good old Van Baal. Bloody hell. That is impressive. Oh, we'll continue the effort here with Tao Gagenhart. Let's try and catch up to Medeus. Give him some protection. But Van Baal... Well, he snuck in there without us even telling him to. 
Quintana's very quickly becoming the fourth priority on the climbs, bless him. That's been our main rider in season one. I don't think we've got enough of a gap though with Medus and Gagenhart here. I could be wrong. Just don't quite think we have. He's asked his teammates to chase you down because you're dangerous for the overall standings. You're going to have to try and hold out. I think it might just be a one man job here from Medus. We're going to. Uh... Well, tell Gagenhart to go how he's going, actually. We'll just keep him like that. But it's uh, this man, Medua, who we want to focus on. Gagenhart's going to be pretty likely to go into that main group, but he's still got a decent lead as Medua's here. And of course, he's still got a full feed left. Rather annoyingly, it's that stupid glitch it's doing now where it decides, no, you're not having any feed. That's uh, annoying. Let's see if we can go back on Medus and get the feed. No. Will it let him do it now? No. Oh. I hate this glitch. Right, he's consuming the feed now, but the problem is we can't control him. So that was all a bit of a waste of time, wasn't it? That's frustrating. We want to get away in the final kilometers. And he definitely can't consume anything now. Right, okay. They can't do much about this. Just going to have to go with okay, what we've got. I suppose, really, this is time for Swifty to shine. But he hasn't really got the energy. Mm, I don't know. It might be time for Swifty to shine. Because it was going to be a stage where I thought we'd get a breakaway. That's why I thought... This could happen, but mm, that's the fear of there being someone at the front. I think it's Van Baal we go with. He's the man who seems to have the most energy left. And his versatility is what we're craving here. Problem is, there's a lot of riders to get through. And the main man is uh, making ground all the time. Going to get our main guys to attack. Probably all apart from Swifty, to be quite honest. Just to keep up with his pack. Again, only a few kilometres to go in this race, so we need to keep uh, lively. But I think it's Van Baal we're going to focus on here. Hopefully the rest of our guys will do okay. We're telling them to attack. There's nothing more we can tell them to do, to be honest. Okay. I'll put in a big acceleration. Seems to have a small gap as Van Baal does to the rest. Again, it's not letting us take our feed. That's annoying. But what can we do about it? Okay. Nothing I'll is what the uh, answer is, but... The lawn's being mowed outside, so apologies if you can hear that. But here we go for the end of the stage. I don't know how good this guy is as a sprinter, but I guess we're just about to find out. Kilometre to go. Can we say something? Can we do anything about this one man who's at the front? He's not really going for it. Van Baal is, though. And Van Baal has won the stage. His first stage. As a uh, TIJ Racing Team rider. And he's delivered the goods. Cracking stuff. Very good sign and he seems to be. Brilliant. Well, here's the podium. I have to say, one man I didn't expect to be at the top of that was uh, Van Baal. I know they all look the same in game. But yeah, Van Baal. Stage victory. He's going to have, of course, the uh, yellow jersey. The green jersey. Medus has the polka dot jersey. And Medus has the young rider jersey. Can't argue at that start, can you? Huge congratulations for this win, guys. Our chances of victory were virtually nil. This is an outstanding performance. You beat all the favourites. We hit the ground running, and tomorrow we'll have the honour of defending the yellow jersey. Great start. Van Baal top. Medua's fifth. Swifty 15th as well. Nine points for Medua's on the, uh, the mountains. As you can see, four of our guys getting points. Only gave away one point to that. It's very solid stuff. And I can't complain at that one at all. Looking really good here. And in the pro cycling rankings, well, we've got 29 points. That's more than anybody else. And what a brilliant start. Annoyingly, the lawnmower is just getting louder and louder and louder as we go. Um, but yeah, I think we're going to leave it there for today. Should be an interesting one next time out. We've got the flat stage and then we've got the mountainous stage. Uh, and I think we'll both do both of those in Thursday's video. But you'll find out. I might do just the flat stage and then the uh, mountainous stage on Saturday. But we've given ourselves a really good chance 
um, to retain the yellow jersey in La Route course. So if you've enjoyed that, make sure to leave a like down below. Comment your thoughts as well and subscribe for regular Tour de France content on a Tuesday, Thursday and Saturday. Pro Team Season 3 is well in motion and it's going to be a cracker, I think. So uh, I hope you guys enjoy and I'll be back on Thursday for the next episode. Thank you and I'll see you guys later. Goodbye for now.